Francois, good evening. Excellency, this is quite a tour de force. Um, you have succeeded in 18 months as head of the interim government to do what many governments have never achieved, or countries in their lifetime, or where some are still striving to try to achieve that. Uh, so before turning to the audience, and I know many of them are at the edge of their seat wanting to uh, ask you some further questions and clarification, um, you know, keeping in mind uh, the fact that we need to be very humble compared to what you've achieved in such a short time, but also keeping in mind your comment that um, we have all to be patient, that it does take time to bring uh, solidity and sustainability to, to any reform. Um, I was just wondering, in what way do you think that the Canadian experience with our diversity um, would be relevant and useful to your country and its evolution? Complicated question. I uh, uh, must tell you that uh, my team who came to Canada, uh, we meet uh, every hour with uh, one of the organizations, institution here in Canada, and so we've learned a great deal on uh, how this uh, uh, very, uh, very uh, complex machine works. Uh, of uh, Parliament uh, the, um, uh, works out the law, and then uh, of, um, the most important implementation of the of the law. Uh, in in this moment, so many institutions work here. I think uh, when we uh, met with people who looks after uh, the status of official languages, uh, um, uh, ombudsman uh, on uh, of. Um, uh, on the uh, on the languages uh, on provincial level, uh, federal level, it's amazing. It's of course you must have uh, such a budget uh, to keep uh, those offices, uh, but uh, they are uh, in great necessity. They are working, and uh, they are resolving those issues. People can complain, and someone will respond to them, and uh, explain them. So, because we are talking about the subtle issues, it doesn't uh, give you bread, these issues, but uh, without the res resolution of those issues, life is just stopped in, in, in great jams. So, this is, uh, I think we should uh, really um, learn a lot of things uh, from your country. We just started, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, and we hope you will be back many times, Excellency. Why don't we turn to all of you. There are roving or microphones with people that will rove them. And uh, please do uh, stand up, uh, give your name, where you're from, and then uh, your question, your comment uh, for uh, Her Excellency to be able to respond. Yes, please go ahead. Country. I'm a lawyer in Ottawa. My name is Robert Nelson. And uh, I was asked to study the judicial system and judges in your country in 2008. Could you tell us what reforms, if any, have been done with respect to judges and the judicial system uh, in your beautiful country? Mm -hmm. uh after uh, uh, 2010, uh, when we have changed the system of governance, uh, uh, we have now a parliamentary system, the president has limited power, and so on. The reform of the court system was uh, and remained very acute, and uh, uh, the parliament has set up such a special uh, commission, uh, the council uh, commission, uh, on selection of judges. And our aim is to, uh, uh, to, to re-elect almost uh, the whole core of, uh, corps of judges. So um, I've been, uh, I met today with uh, Chief Justice uh, and uh, her colleagues uh, in uh, uh, the Supreme Court, and uh, uh, they've been a bit uh, 
uh, shocked probably that we have 32 judges uh, in the Supreme Court, whereas you have only nine. And uh, um, uh, we have uh, um, separate constitutional court also, as you know. So, uh, for, um, uh, in other words, we are uh, now, uh, before it was just the appointment by president uh, of these uh, uh, judges. Now this will be independent commission, council, which will select on the base of application of uh, um, uh, having in mind the merit of people, uh, this, uh, the core of the judges. So it's a very complicated process and uh, a lot of uh, resentment to this. Uh, mm -hmm. This reform goes quite difficult way, but in my country, as well as in Georgia, as I recall, this uh, uh, court system reform, it's in progress. Thank you. Thank you very much. This is very much in keeping with the point of the rule of law, which you mentioned earlier. Um, back to you. Yes, please, Mark, go ahead. Good evening. My name is Laura Dawson. I'm an international trade consultant. A few years ago, I had the opportunity to teach some courses for Kyrgyz officials on WTO issues, and I enjoyed my time with the Kyrgyz officials very much. Um, I was struck by your discussion of the Kyrgyz language and how difficult it is for four million to maintain the integrity. I'm wondering, could you bring us some greetings in Kyrgyz language, and could you teach us to say thank you in Kyrgyz as well? <laughs> Siz bergen sorunuzca çok rahmat. Kırgız dil bu Türk dilin aymağına giret. Kırgızca rahmat degen söz, this is the thank you. Rahmat. Rahmat. Thank you. Yes, please go ahead. Uh, good evening, Your Excellency. My name is Bill Crosby. I was Canadian ambassador in Afghanistan for two years. One thing that struck me um, living in Afghanistan was the lack of positive relationships among countries in the region. And Central Asia really stands out for the fact that unlike almost any region of the world, countries, governments are the least connected, the least cooperative on issues of security, on issues of prosperity. So my question is to what extent do you see the relationships of Kyrgyzstan with its neighbors, including with Afghanistan, which I know is not quite the neighbor, uh, as important to the success of Kyrgyzstan itself? Good question, Ambassador. And uh, it's a shame to uh, recognize that uh, really we do not have uh, uh, such a working and constant relations with Afghanistan. It's sort of uh, behind the uh, iron wall. Uh, uh, it was like uh, with China, for example, in the past in Soviet days. Uh, we have a, a thousand kilometer border, Kyrgyzstan with China, but uh, never uh, went across the border. Although we have also Kyrgyz uh, of, uh, um, people living in China, 130,000 of them. So uh, I've got, uh, this is because probably of our uh, Introversy of our behavior uh, in the past, and uh, we are we are from uh, we have this background of uh, uh, very closed countries, and uh, uh, 20 years of our uh, experience of international relations, uh, and uh, uh, quite a uh, life uh, difficult and hardship, and then uh, uh, we had a communication with the country donor countries. Uh, but you are right, regarding security, we must have a close relations with Afghanistan. We do not have direct borders with Afghanistan. Afghanistan is beyond Tajikistan. Borders are poor, unfortunately. Afghan-Tajik, Tajik-Kyrgyz borders. A lot of challenges uh, come from Afghanistan uh, for, until today. And uh, we must cooperate. Uh, and donor countries also I think uh, they are not uh, concentrate, not focus so, uh, very too much on that. Uh, we are together now in Shanghai Organization of Cooperation. 
I meet Mr. Karzai sometimes uh, uh, within this org organization or uh, in the past, not now, of course. But, uh, and then uh, 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 organization of economical cooperation uh, also, uh, 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 Afghanistan is there. But again, what I don't like uh, in our parts uh, of the world, that only presidents who meet and, or prime ministers, but this is not about the people. We miss each other. We want to communicate also. And the base, American base, which is in Kyrgyzstan, as uh, all of the people, Tulemont knows, right, about this. Uh, so I think uh, this is uh, of, um, the base uh, sort of uh, links us. Uh, we feel that uh, this base uh, is, uh, it goes, uh, everyone goes to Afghanistan, forth and back. But we must trade, we must do the business with Afghanistan. We must open our embassy. We didn't open yet our embassy in Afghanistan. Although Afghanistan has embassy in Kyrgyzstan. So it's a shameful issue. Sorry to say. Yes. Please go ahead. Just a second. Just. Yes. Thank you. My name is Mubina Jaffer, and I'm in the Senate of Canada, and Senator Danino and I look forward to welcoming you tomorrow to our Senate. I have worked in many conflict areas, uh, many times under the guidance of Mr. McNee, and I'm very struck by some things you've said, and I hope I will paraphrase it correctly. You said to, for, um, to uh, people in society, each citizen be given an equal chance, and then genuine efforts have to be made to include ethnic minorities. And His Highness spoke about cultivate shared citizenship. The areas that I work in, the cha biggest challenge is how do you cultivate shared citizenship? And I wonder if you can elaborate on that. Uh, this is, uh, uh, again, uh, 20 years uh, sovereignty uh, country. I mean, it's uh, quite a short experience. And uh, people now build uh, new citizenship. Uh, we, all of us, we've been Soviet people, so new breed of uh, uh, sort of uh, humankind was uh, breeding there in the Soviet Union, Soviet uh, nation, so it collapsed. And now in every 12, I'm not counting uh, Baltic countries, in every 12 uh, of the post-Soviet countries, we are trying to build our citizenship and nation. So quite, uh, uh, nobody was very much successful how I uh, observed this uh, as, uh, um, situation. Uh, there are a lot of um, uh, discussion in every country. If, of course, you are homogeneous like Armenia, for example, probably uh, it's much easier. But uh, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, uh, Russia, uh, each of us, we are multinational countries. Uh, and uh, um, uh, new president who came now of um, replacing me, his inaugural speech was that uh, I want that anymore in our passports will be not written uh, Kir uh, uh, Uzbek, whatever uh, ethnicity, which was uh, all the time uh, for, uh, take place. It will be just a Kyrgyz citizen. Kyrgyz people are not uh, happy with that. They say, why? Why we are deprived of uh, uh, to be Kyrgyz? And uh, uh, others also, the uh, Ukrainian living in Kyrgyzstan, they think that uh, it's, uh, why I'm Ukrainian and uh, uh, let's keep going like that. So uh, discussion just started. Uh, and I know that uh, this discussion takes place in Ukraine when they, uh, they want to build political nation um, and uh, sort of make a, a united uh, such a status. Uh, um, in Kazakhstan also the same uh, situation. So I think uh, uh, each of us, we are in the search of uh, such an uh, identity of citizenship, let's say. Let's put like this one. A special welcome to uh, ministers who were undertaking parliamentary duties until a few minutes ago. Uh, I think, Wendy, you wanted to... I saw one hand over there. I think I saw your hand up 
earlier. Yes. <laughs> Barb Darling with the Canadian International Council and also a consultant who has worked in Central Asia and traveled in Kyrgyzstan. Um, your country faces so many challenges. Uh, you've chosen to put a priority on economic development, which is surely very important, trying to find alternatives to some of the um, the alternative ways of earning income, trafficking, and so on. But what, what do you see in terms of the priority to put on social equity in terms of um, your capacity to uh, ensure that the new wealth that's being generated is shared throughout the population? Um, what, what will be your uh, the weight that you will give to uh, social equity, to social development, development um, that helps each individual citizen of Kyrgyzstan um, realize their potential with uh, the new wealth that you see being developed um, with the mining industries and so on. I'm not sure if I made myself clear. If I rightly understood you, uh, are you talking about the uh, social developments, uh, right, uh, mm -hmm. uh, in Kyrgyzstan, and uh, what are the problems? Uh, this is the question. I can't catch up, uh, sorry, uh, just a question. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you hold your, um, your microphone closer. Yes. All right, can you That's hear better. me now? Is yeah. that better? Uh, yes. And is the word social development um, clear or uh, mm -hmm. you talk about um, attacking poverty right. and uh, how will you go about ensuring that some of the new wealth is uh, fairly distributed mm. and uh, the benefits are received by every Kyrgyz right. citizen? Okay, that's uh, Kyrgyzstan, uh, corruption is endemic disease in all this uh, uh, new reality. Uh, and uh, uh, what uh, we produce, what we have, uh, this is really uh, imperative to distribute uh, uh, to the nation, to the people. And uh, uh, we, we run a lot of uh, all sorts of program. Uh, this uh, government uh, president is very much committed uh, to, um, uh, to fight uh, corruption. But uh, uh, social programs in my country, uh, certainly they are uh, um, still weak. We want to give more uh, resources uh, to the social developments. Uh, and uh, uh, just one example, uh, we develop a lot of the microfinance, uh, micro credit movement in, in our countries are widely spread. Uh, mm -hmm. Quite a strong movement. Uh, whereas in neighboring countries, you would not find this. I was this February in Bangladesh taking the group of people from Kyrgyzstan. And so for us, it was a discovery of the uh, essence of this work. Uh, uh, we have uh, half a million people uh, taking the credit from microcredit uh, organiz microfinancial organizations, running the uh, for mm -hmm. small businesses. And we, uh, visit, we have visited today your uh, cooperative association. And I must tell you that we missed this uh, institution. We used to have in Soviet days, and then it somehow disappeared was destroyed totally. We do not have in my country, and I'm afraid in all these uh, post-Soviet uh, countries, uh, this cooperative movement. But this is a tool, instrument to my mind, how to build market economy and how everyone can uh, work and fit itself. So, in other words, we used to live in uh, the state of social, uh, uh, of uh, welfare. Everything was provided, we had everything. Today, we are turning people to work, to fit uh, themselves. And so 
to uh, open their business uh, to uh, the governments uh, um, uh, uh, on the on the side of the government to invest more into the education and healthcare and uh, social affairs it's still problematic uh, i would say for example i would give one uh, example that uh, uh, kyrgyz government puts 4% uh, as the government of the united states uh, uh, into the education of the uh, of the whole budget but because of the uh, very miserable volume of uh, um, the GDP in my country, then only $56 per, per kit we have in my country, whereas the uh, United States has 2600 Average in the world, this is about $800. So, I mean, uh, we want to do better, but uh, so far, really, uh, economics should uh, be better. Mm -hmm. There are two questions here. I will take the two questions considering the time um, and uh, so that mm -hmm. it will be easier. Yes, please go ahead and then. Uh, my name is Budhendra Dube and I'm a representative of the member of the Global Center for Pluralism. I just would like to, and you alluded to it, that education is one of the, one of the greatest foundation we can get to, for a developing society. I am from an underdeveloped country myself, where corruption is rife, Guyana, and etc. And I just wondered how can you, and you alluded to the, His Highness working with the uh, university in, in Kyrgyz, and I just wondered how we can help to, uh, to foster education, not only at the small children level, but at the university level, where academia can come out in a greater force and maybe help the nation. So, uh, yes, go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Victoria, and I'm from Carleton University um, and originally from Belarus. Um, as you mentioned, uh, Kyrgyzstan has joined the customs union, and uh, so it'll be future. No, we, uh, we are in the process. In the process, of yes. <laughs> and um, so, how do you think this will uh, help the economy in Kyrgyzstan? And I understand that there's a, a citizenship and lots of uh, similarities with Russia and Belarus as the, from Soviet Union. Uh, do you think possibly in the future it could uh, be somewhat similar to the European Union customs union, or uh, or no? Oh, yeah, the ambitions is uh, very uh, good and uh, uh, bright, let's say, of, uh, as uh, it's prescribed today. But uh, for us, uh, customs union is vital. Everything what we produce in Kyrgyzstan, we sell in Kazakhstan or in Russia. This is our market. We, we don't sell anything in China. We are not competitive there. So. And uh, uh, the uh, Russian market uh, for us, uh, it's a uh, big market. So we are 5 million, there are uh, 140 million uh, market. So, and uh, secondly, uh, all these uh, borders are painful for all our nations. So we used to live together with you in one country. Now people uh, from Kyrgyzstan uh, try to get to Kazakhstan. It's torture. So, and, for us, it is important that our business people, just the ordinary people, they will go free, forth and back, for uh, capital, for labor force, for uh, services, for everything uh, customs union uh, will open uh, good perspectives. Uh, this is my response to your question. And education, just uh, vital. Edu uh, what you do today, uh, the Aga Khan Foundation, and uh, a lot of plans, as you know. So we hope that, uh, uh, and, and my nation is 98% uh, literate nation with this inertia uh, having uh, from, uh, a lot of diplomas, diplomas, uh, uh, regardless of quality of education, sometimes uh, it's uh, very regrettable. Uh, but, uh, and and uh, parents who invest a lot into the education of their children, and children, they leave countries somewhere up to uh, Europe, uh, so parents stay there. Uh, they invested everything into their children, and uh, didn't got back anything, so this is something what's going on. And then we have uh, quite a serious uh, problem 
uh, erosion of uh, science and uh, technical uh, uh, such uh, of disciplines and uh, we want to turn uh, for a bit correct the education in our country. So um, we have uh, today about 50 universities for such a small country just because people consider that this is the business. They started to open uh, universities, uh, all sorts of universities. Time come to, uh, to make an order, to uh, put the benchmarks and uh, uh, to, uh, from, to, to scrutiny their activity and uh, cut uh, the bad, uh, let's say, university. So uh, I hope that uh, we'll do a lot of uh, good things together. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a, it's a tremendous experience um, that you've shared with us in rebuilding a country. And many of the areas that you've identified, whether it is building that railroad between Shanghai and Amsterdam, or many of the other points, I think will require a lot of, of solidarity, of international solidarity. And I know that many people in this room uh, already um, you know, have, have heard you and are in a different positions to, to be able to assist in some ways. Uh, so I would now like to invite Her Excellency Adrian Clarkson to express the appreciation of the room uh, to you.